Hi! Welcome back to the Boulder Bookstore. My name is Liesl Freudenstein, and I am the children's buyer for the store. Last week I got to introduce you to my son's favorite books via some clever costume changes. This week, hi! I have an actual child! <laughs> so I'm Lola Ecker. Um, I'm Liesl's daughter, as previously mentioned. Hi, Mom. And I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite books um, through my life. So I'm going to start with Skippy John Jones. This is not the first one, but it is my favorite one. Uh, this one is called Sticky, you know, Skippy John Jones in the Doghouse, um, and it is about Skippy, who is a Siamese cat who thinks he's a chihuahua, and his adventures in, maybe it's a dream, maybe it's not a dream, it's a little mysterious, um, but his adventures looking for some magic beans, um, and all of the fun cast of chihuahuas that he meets along the way. Um, then we have Anansi and the, Magic, and the Magic Stick. This is not the only Anansi, uh, but it is one of my personal favorites. I am deeply arachnophobic, so it's a little weird that one of my favorite books is about a spider, uh, but Anansi is a little bit of a trickster. Uh, he thinks he's smart. He's very much not. Um, this particular one is about him stealing a magic stick and getting up to several hijinks. He is deeply lazy, which causes some problems uh, when he uh, floods the town. So. That's an Anansi and the Magic Stick. And then this one, I'm cheating a little bit. I didn't actually read this as a kid, but I like it, so I'm going to share it anyway. This is I Want My Hat Back. This is a delightful story about a very angry bear who has lost his hat and him going on a fun little adventure to find it. He is very kind. He puts a turtle on a rock, and then he, um, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but something happens to a rabbit. Then we have George and Martha. Um, this is what I did actually read as a kid. This is about two hippos. They might be married, they might not. I always thought they were. Turns out they're just friends. Um, or, you know, maybe maybe they're just spouses that are also friends. Uh, and this is a collection of short stories and their happy little adventures. Um, my favorite one is about split pea soup. It's where Martha makes split pea soup, but George doesn't like it, but doesn't know how to tell Martha that he doesn't like her cooking. So instead of being like, oh, maybe let's not have soup again today, uh, he hides it in his slippers, and then Martha finds out. <laughs> so that's a fun little adventure. And then we have The Emperor of Absurdia. This is one of my all-time favorites. Um, everything about it is just great. It's super cozy looking as well, like everything looks very soft and huggable, which I like about this art style. But um, it's about the Emperor of Absurdia, who goes on a few adventures on his day. First he has to find his snuggly scarf, um, and then he does, but then he has to go and find where his lunch goes, because he's eating lunch, and it's an egg, and then it hatches, and it's a dragon. So he has to go find the dragon, um, and meet the dragon's mama, which is quite the ordeal. Uh, then we're going to move into books that I read as I got a little bit older. This was a real standout in middle school for me. This is Dragon Song. It's the first of three. Um, I was just... Dragon Song is about a girl, Menely, who runs away from home, which is like a fishing village, and then goes and lives with some dragons in a cave, in a cave um, and plays music. And as a teen, like as a 13-year-old, this just really hit different. <laughs> it was a very good emotional release for me as a tween, I guess. Then Bartimaeus, I forget when I read when I read Bartimaeus, there are a couple of one of them. This is the Amulet of Samarkand. Um, this one is about, predictably enough, the Amulet of Samarkand. But Bartimaeus is a demon or a jinni that a magician Nathaniel has summoned to help him out and like do all sorts of things for him, little tasks. There's political intrigue, there's a assassination attempts, um, and then as you get into further books you get more into Bartimaeus's past, because uh, he actually worked for the Ptolemy family back when, and it's like the Ptolemy's they were up to some stuff, let me tell you. Uh, so it's wacky demon hijinks um, and political intrigue, so it's just super fun and I recommend it. Um, and then we have the Boneless Mercies. Um, this is about a group of women mercy killers back in, it's kind of a retelling of Beowulf, but in a really fun way that I haven't seen done before in that it doesn't really involve Beowulf or Grendel all that much. Uh, they're there, but they're more side characters. Um, and it's about this group of mercy killer women who have come from lots of different uh, tragic backstories and like have a lot of difficulties in their past working through that and becoming closer as a group and solving problems together um, and also going on a quest uh, to kill Grendel's mother so it's all very exciting. Uh, it's kind of a heavy read not as in like long but as in like emotionally heavy because it's a group of mercy killers so there's a lot of death um, that's mentioned. 
And then my personal favorite from the past two years, two years, is Gideon the Ninth. The next one is Harrow the Ninth. Very, very good. Um, it is lesbian necromancers exploring a gothic castle in space, which is just right up so many of my alleys. It is delightful. Um, it is more of an adult book, as in there's lots of swearing um, and good vocabulary, so I did use this for a couple of vocab checks uh, in LA. <laughs> But it is just a delightful story about a sassy space jock who doesn't want to be a necromancer, or doesn't want to be a necromancer sidekick, uh, trying to run away and join the army, and her necromancer being very much not into that, and also they kind of bully each other a little bit. But then they become great friends. It's all... it's surprisingly uplifting uh, for being a book about murder um, in a castle in space. There's a rabbit. There is a rabbit in the store. You should save that and then we'll do the Peter Rabbit next week. <laughs> Hair of the Ninth is coming up this year and these books are by Tasman Murr. Okay, and then I know Mom talked about Skullduggery Pleasant for my brother Dane's books, but you, you gotta read Skullduggery Pleasant. You just gotta. Um, it's by Derek Landy. This isn't the first one because we don't have that one on hand because uh, our family loaned it out and yeah, uh, <laughs> we loaned it out to a lot of people because we want everybody to read this book. Um, Derek Landy was originally a scriptwriter. So that's his background, uh, which means it's all very quick and it's very witty and there's fantastic back and forth. Um, this is a YA novel, there's no swearing, so this one's actually kid-friendly. Uh, the theme is skeletons. This is about a fancy sassy skeleton and his fun sassy sidekick. It's more about the sidekick, actually, Valkyrie Kane, um, and her adventures going on through this world of magic and intrigue. Um, so it is delightful, it is hilarious. It's my all-time favorite series. Uh, I think there's 13 now? Thir yeah, there's 13 now. Um, I've read them all more than once. They're great. 10 out of 10. Thanks, guys! <laughs>